I'm putting together a portfolio for my own personal investment. And I'm spelling that out in a series for stock market for beginners, value investing. I'm applying value investing principles, the same principles that have helped Warren Buffett become one of the wealthiest humans on the planet. I'm applying those principles using econometric style data to look at stocks and sort through and build this portfolio. If you are a stock market for a beginner type of individual, this will be an excellent opportunity for you to look and see some of these ratios that I'm putting together. Cautionary though, I'm using price to book ratio and I'll explain that in a minute. Price to book ratio is an interesting metric, but it isn't really necessarily something that's going to make me remove a lot of stocks from consideration. Because although you can use it in a certain way, and I'll explain this further, it's not exactly a linear look at stocks. And there's some rationale. I'll explain all that. Let's jump into look at some charts and we'll see which stocks will make it and which ones I will cut. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the like and follow button for continued content. If you are one of those uh, searching out stock market for beginners, you really want to focus on my value investing playlist just below uh, in my on my channel where I break down all of these metrics and help you understand investing for beginners. Given that, let's talk about price to book ratio and then I'll explain why it's both a really good metric and one that really doesn't have much value at all. It's all a matter of how you look at it. First, price to book. Basically, how much is a company worth? Market share. You take all the shares, you multiply the share count versus the stock price, and that gives you the market capitalization. How much the entire company is worth on all the exchanges throughout the world. The next thing we look at is book value. Book value basically is assets less liabilities. Every company has some kind of assets. Some companies have lots of assets. Some don't. And that's important to understand. A lot of companies can do a lot of things with very little assets. A lot of companies can't do a lot of things with a lot of assets. And I'll explain that. Basically, you take your total assets minus liabilities, and that gives you total equity. So I'm comparing a ratio of total market capitalization to total equity. Now, total equity is the ability for a company to create more revenue. If their equity is continually rising and their assets are exceeding debts, that's a solid company. And that's one of the main basic things I'm looking at is how many of these companies are positive with total equity. That's really the main focus here. Because let's think about this for a second. Apple Computer, one of the biggest companies in the world, they don't have very much assets though. Yet they have all that revenue and all that profit. The reason why is they contract everything out. So there's a couple variables you need to consider when you're looking at price to book ratio. First, how many share count? Why am I not using just the stock price? This is simple because what happens is Every single stock has a different share count. So you need the total market capitalization. Next, we look at total assets. Again, some companies have very little assets, but contract everything out. Coca-Cola company is an excellent example that if you think about it, all they really have is one asset. They own a label that has a recipe. They let Coca-Cola bottling do all the dirty work, all the distribution and things like this. Of course, their equity would be the ownership of all their various labels and the value of those labels. But they really don't have anything other than recipes. I mean, that's a really kind of minuscule look at it. But when you break it down, yeah, that's kind of how that works. Then you have other companies like Alcoa Corporation who have massive facilities all over the world. Those are assets that the Alcala company actually own. 
but they don't make a whole lot of revenue and margins based on producing so much product like they do. So when we look at total book value, uh, price to book value ratio, you don't have the ability to have a linear kind of look, say company A versus company B, this one's high, this one's low, let's get rid of them. You have to kind of sift through. Now, on a regular basis, I my content is based on cannabis stocks, and cannabis stocks right now are really picking up, and hopefully in the next couple of days, we're going to see a lot of activity. Given that, cannabis stocks kind of are all lumped together in the same kind of thing. A lot of these companies are linear in the sense that they produce, process, and sell a lot of the same products, just different labels. So you can compare those on a linear basis. But looking at some of these companies that we're looking at here, like a chip maker versus a computer maker, there's the opportunity that there's so much differentiation there that it's impossible to say, A, looking at B, we can eliminate it. But here's what I can eliminate simply by looking at this. Any company that has negative total equity. And that's really what I broke it down to. I had, I started out with 615 technology stocks. I eliminated 315. So I'm down to 300. Now I get to eliminate 15 more. Let's jump into the computer and I'll show you what I'm looking at. But first, let's take a look at a very important chart. This chart here is price to book ratio on for the entire S&P 500. Now this gives us a baseline comparison as to where things could be at any particular time. The average for the S&P 500 over the course of the several years is 2.0. It's about 1.97. We'll call it two to make things even. It's trading just below four right now, which means price to book ratio is generally speaking two times greater than what it is normally. This gives us an idea so that if you could find a company that's trading well above that or well below that, it'll prompt you to ask questions. Now, let's jump into the computer and look at some spreadsheets. Okay, so this is Apple Numbers, uh, the spreadsheet for them. And I have everything sorted in column one uh, alphabetically. Next, we have the symbol, price, stock price, market capitalization, total equity, and price to equity ratio. Let's go ahead and sort this out. We'll look at descending first, the biggest numbers. Fortinet, 203. Their price versus uh, their market capitalization versus the total equity is an astounding 203. Gartner, 168. Applied uh, Materials, 103. Apple comes in at number nine with 36. And we see a tremendous number here. If we scan all the way down to four, which was actually, it was roughly, we'll call it, well, we'll call it four, 114 stock, 113 stocks, because the first one is one, are above the average. Now there are 300 stocks in this. What I, and as I mentioned before, we can go all the way down Shoals, Digit, Norton LifeLock, Motorola, VMware, all of these companies here, there are 15 total. I will go ahead and remove them from consideration because they have negative equity. And going through these 300 stocks like this, this was the one certainty I knew I was going to get. So if you are one of those stock market for beginners kind of individuals who's looking to kind of sort through this right here will tell you one thing that you're probably looking for. You want to get positive equity. A lot of companies out there, why would you buy one as a consideration if it's underwater? Given that, a lot of these companies, now we start looking at some of these others that are trading well below. Their, they have so much equity, but a very low market capitalization. And that gives us something to consider. Why? What is it about this? Let's look at this one particular company, the very low one here. ASC Technology has $9.27 billion in total equity, 
market capitalization of 100 million. This gives us the ability to start asking the question, what's going on there? Is that an opportunity? Now, when we look at the very top of the list, a company that has a tremendously high uh, price to equity ratio, does that necessary, is that necessarily a company we should eliminate from consideration? Or should we ask the question, well, what's going on there? How does that company generate so much revenue and market capitalization on such a small amount of total equity? Now, I just did the same exact exercise on my cannabis stocks. I have that uh, spreadsheet up on my website for those who are subscribed to this. I'm going to put this up on my website as well. You're welcome to stop by the website. There's a link down below. You can sift through this and start looking at some of these price to book ratios and asking questions, which ones are potentially interesting and which ones are not. But most importantly, why? That's probably one of the biggest steps that you're going to ask there once you get the results. Again, the negative number, absolute, we're just going to scratch them right away. They'll be on that list on the website. Make sure you stop by and look at that. Nonetheless, there are many other factors I'm going to be looking at when I look at these ratios and put together this portfolio. This is something that I wanted to point out, price to book ratio, as a potential consideration to understand what's going on with the stock. Can a company generate tremendous amount of revenue and profit on very little assets or vice versa? If you are someone who is looking to understand stock market for beginning beginners type information, make sure you like and follow. I've got a video course up on my website. Make sure you uh, try that out as well. We'll see you in the next video.